Real estate mogul Jeff Green joins me now in a Fox Business exclusive. Jeff owns apartment buildings in everywhere, Southern California, New York City, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. And you're building some now, Jeff. What's your first reaction to what would be the national version of rent control? A completely ridiculous idea that makes no sense whatsoever, especially in the general election. It makes no sense at all. I understand on a primary, if you're trying to really go after the far left, people who don't know anything about housing, but in a general election, when he's trying to appeal to independents and moderates, I have no idea why we come up with such a crazy idea. I actually agree with you. However, I, I got to play devil's advocate for the moment. When he announced it in front of the NAACP audience, people clapped. Many Americans are stressed from rising rents, and you saw their, their wages are not rising at the same pace. So what are the negative effects? Explain your position here so that people understand the unintended consequences of rent caps. Well, it's interesting, Liz. I have a lot of experience with rent control because, you know, I basically, I started in real estate when I was at Harvard Business School and I bought a three-decker in Somerville, which had rent control. And it, I could, saw what it was doing. It was, it was causing people to not fix up their properties. There was no development whatsoever. And I, while I was at Harvard Business School, I was the force behind getting rent control, limit, rent control eliminated from Somerville. And what happened after that was an enormous amount of new development. All these homes got fixed up. Rents did not go up because there was a more supply. And then I was in L.A. for many years, which has a rent control law, which makes no sense. It froze rents for any apartments built before 1978. So you would have two identical buildings next door to each other. One would have frozen rents that would just only could go up 2 or 3% a year, and the other were market rents. And the biggest, craziest thing was that from all this is that it was a disproportionate, disproportionately benefited people who were wealthy. We did studies of who were the people in these apartments. It wasn't low-income people. Low-income people were not playing this game. Mm -hmm. They were not benefiting. And now I'm in Florida. Florida, we have no rent control whatsoever. Apartments are getting overbuilt. Rents are dropping. And you can just see, if you give real estate investors and developers an incentive yeah. to go out and create more housing, you will have a tremendous amount of supply and rents will drop. If you do the opposite, mm -hmm. you can see what's happened with rent control. Study after study has shown how ineffective it has been. Well, the, the old expression, if you want less of something, tax it or regulate it, and this would be a version of regulating it. Right now, a real estate magnate similar to you, uh, but different in many ways, Donald Trump is actually walking the floor, as we understand it, of the RNC convention right now. He's just getting the scope of the, the area. He will be speaking tomorrow night. You two have been at odds in the past. I mean, you ran for governor of Florida as a Democrat. Uh, that said, do you think that he will make things better for builders out there like yourself if he were to become president? Well, look, there's no question that Donald Trump is pro-business. I'm not saying I don't agree with most of the things he does otherwise, but there's no question that he will make it a free-for-all for business. I don't know that that's going to be good. I mean, look, he's going to cut the corporate income tax rate to 15 percent. We already we, we have a problem in this country right now of a, a debt-to-GDP ratio of 1.2 that's heading towards 1.5. That is unsustainable. Yeah. So, of course, he'll make things great for a year or two. But then what happens when the catastrophe? Then we have a catastrophe. And then what happens is no one will want to buy our, our bonds anymore. Rates will go through the roof. The stocks, the stocks will drop. Real estate prices will drop. So that's not a solution, just cutting taxes and having a free-for-all for people in business. A solution would, for housing, if you... If, sorry. If, if the Democrats want to win this race, and they have the whole issue of deciding or trying to get Joe Biden to decide to get out of the race. I mean, you heard about Congressman Adam Schiff, who's running for Senate in California. He has come out publicly, the highest ranking Democrat to come out publicly to say Joe Biden's got to leave the race. In fact, when he was unveiling this rent cap thing, about 5 percent caps on uh, rent control, uh, he, he stumbled and he said $55. It just it's getting worse and worse. And now every time he's in front of a microphone, people are, are waiting on tenterhooks to see is he going to make some sort of gaffe or or show that he's not quite there as as the leader of the greatest free country in the world. So why would the Democrats put something like this out there, which is so not free market and so unhelpful, especially at a time where we have a housing shortage? 
you know, I just have no answer for that whatsoever. It, I, I was shocked because, if anything, let's face it, Donald Trump, when it comes to abortion, you know, now that he's got the nomination, he's going to be running for he's, he's, he's the Republican nominee. He's pivoting, pivoting to the center on abortion. And now that Joe Biden is the nominee, you would think he'd be pivoting to the center. Instead, uh -huh, he's, uh -huh. he's moving sharply to the left with, a, with a, what's, what's really nothing more than a very socialist policy, freezing with price and rent controls. We know it doesn't work. The study after study, the National Multi-Family Housing Council, the Reason Foundation, you can look up study after study after study to see that the policy does not work. It will hurt renters long term. Uh -huh. And again, I just want to emphasize again, the beneficiaries of these rent, we all, anyone who's in New York knows, plenty of people are watching this show have friends who have these rent stabilized apartments. How many of them are needy and have a housing, uh, are housing deprived? And look, we do have a housing problem. I'm not, I don't want to minimize the importance of the housing problem. But that's solved by vouchers. You know, let's get together as a country, people who are legitimately, you know, can't handle, the, can't, can't afford their rent, let's together give them vouchers so they can help pay their rent. Let's do the things we're doing in Florida, you know, which is to promote workforce housing construction. In the yes, state of Florida, yes. you know, look, and I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Reverend DeSantis. However, he just signed a bill that upzone every single property in Florida if you build 40% or more workforce housing. That's going to create, that's what's right. going to create housing and get rents to drop. Well, let's uh, hope we see some better ideas across the nation. Jeff Green, thank you very much.